The Center for E-Learning Didactics and Educational Research at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover will present one of the correct methods to intubate dogs and cats in the following video. Needed for the Skills Lab exercise are tracheal tubes in different sizes and designs, mouth gags of different sizes, syringes with a 2 or 5 milliliter capacity, a cuff fill syringe, a container of lubricating gel, a laryngoscope, a ventilation bag, gauze bandage, scissors, and a kidney dish. Additionally, local anesthesia spray is needed for intubating cats. Intubation assures that the patient's airways remain clear so that unobstructed gas exchange can occur. This may be indicated as an emergency measure to ensure oxygen supply through manual ventilation via a ventilation bag. Additionally, during any procedure under general anesthesia, intubation should be performed to ensure constant oxygen supply. In the case of inhalation anesthesia, the tube also ensures the safe delivery of the anesthetic gas. Intubation should only be performed after adequate anesthesia. All necessary materials are prepared, including a sufficiently long piece of gauze bandage for securing the tracheal tube. The tube is selected according to the size of the dog, ending just before the cranial thoracic aperture and fitting between the two nostrils. The tube at first remains in its packaging, the cuff valve is pulled out, and its leak tightness is checked by inflating it through the tubing with an air-filled syringe. The status of the cuff can be checked with the blue balloon. Caution, the cuff itself should not be touched. Then, the block is released again by withdrawing all the air with a syringe. Immediately behind the tube's connection piece, a longer piece of gauze bandage is attached. This is used to fixate the tube to the animal after intubation and should already be attached at this point so that the subsequent procedure can be carried out as quickly as possible. The animal is positioned in a sternal recumbency or alternatively in a lateral recumbency. The head should be brought into an upright position, the neck stretched and the animal's mouth opened. The head is fixated so that it cannot turn to either side. The wooden mouth gag is inserted between the right or left canine teeth of the upper and lower jaw. Alternatively, mouth gags or a cut-off syringe can be used. If assistance is available to hold the patient's mouth open, the mouth gag can be omitted for intubation. However, care should be taken to not directly touch the mouth. Nevertheless, after intubation, a mouth gag must be used to prevent the patient from biting down on the tube. In live animals, the tongue can gently be pulled out cranioventrally, allowing a view of the larynx. However, this step cannot be performed on the model in this video, as the tongue can easily tear. Instead, the laryngoscope can be used to push the base of the tongue down ventrally. When intubating cats, which are significantly more sensitive to manipulation of the larynx than dogs, the patient's larynx can be sprayed with a local anesthetic spray to facilitate the insertion of the endotracheal tube. Only in extreme emergencies should the epiglottis be pushed down with the laryngoscope spatula. The tracheal tube is only touched at the end where the breathing bag will be attached. Then, the tube is inserted, caudoventrally, between the two vocal cords. The width of the mouth gag can now be loosened. Alternatively, the mouth gag can be replaced with a smaller one or a cut-off syringe. This step is important to avoid overloading the jaw muscles during the following procedure. The tracheal tube is secured around the lower jaw and the back of the head of the animal with gauze bandage using a loop. Care must be taken to keep the tongue free. The cuff is now filled using the cuff fill syringe. For this, the power button is pressed once so that the display shows 00. zero. Then, the syringe is firmly pressed onto the tube valve and the cuff is filled until a pressure of 20 to 30 centimeter water column is reached. To check if the tube is properly placed, the patient is gently ventilated with the ventilation bag two to three times, during which the chest rises and falls. For extubating, 
The air is drawn out of the cuff of the tracheal tube using a syringe. The fixation of the tracheal tube is released. The tracheal tube is now slowly and carefully pulled cranially.